here we go guys a new series this is for youtube right now twitch say hi to youtube and youtube say hi to twitch oh yeah it's going down we got another one shout out to forward chess get some hype in the chat this is the banco gambit guys we're looking at the modernized banco in fact the banco gambit this is a new one i'm a twitch and youtube i'm twitch and youtube i'm gonna say hi to my other self let's go hi youtube hey youtube yeah that's right absolutely correct we put this on youtube so we're looking at the fin shadow variation first why because this one is played the absolute most y'all want to you know you want to get learn from an, a variation that's actually played a lot of course as we always do we're going to do five videos we're not going to cover all of it because that will be actually giving the whole book away for free which we're not doing so we, but we are going to get you up and running today and we are going to look at today the fin shadow variation which is played very often in the Banco Gambit. What is the Banco Gambit? Well, first off, it's good to know what the moves are on the board. D4. It's a D4 opening. It's against D4. Knight F6. C4 happens. C5. Instead of doing anything else, you go C5. What a move, right? Very aggressive stuff. It's also if you like tactics and you like you want to, you know, something different and you want tactics, absolutely this is the opening for you, big fella, all day. So this is a fun one. After c5, a lot of people don't like to take this pawn or deal with this from the white side. So they literally just push past it all the time and say, I have more space. And because you have more space, well, you know, you need to break this up. One thing to understand is pawn chains and obviously uh, a pawn center needs to be obviously uh, broken or chipped up. It needs to be broken up and it needs to be chipped away at. So these, these, this pawn structure needs to be chipped away. So we play the move b5 here, which is an amazing move. b5. It's like sacrificing the pawn. Now, we're, we are going to cover what happens on knight f3. We're going to cover some other moves as well. But the first one we're going to cover is if they take this. Because there's a lot of different rating ranges here. And a lot of people are going to take this. A lot of people are going to take this. And you want to know what to do afterwards. So a lot of people will fin kettle as well. Um, so we're going to look at pawn captures. So c takes b5. You immediately go with a6. You give him another pawn, right? It says save a lot, right? You give him another pawn after a6 so after giving him one you give him another one absolutely a6 what a move and then he says okay cool i'll take it and instead of capturing back immediately now what's the idea why we're sacrificing two pawns well you're doing it for open lines you want lines and diagonals it's tactical it's dynamic you're going to play on the queen side of the board yes you're down a pawn but i have dynamicism and you're making all these pawn moves right generosity says jeff M. exactly right now instead of taking this pawn back in fact the move here is actually g6 you don't even take the pawn it looks like bro bro you're garbage. garbage he just like what is he doing what is he doing he just gave up all these all this material right like if you look at this from the beginning d4 knight of six c4 everything even everything's even and then he give up one pawn and he like bro what are you doing Bruh. and then he give up another pawn Bruh. and then he don't even take it right and this is like so your opponent especially from the right side is absolutely baffled here many times for people that don't know the banco is dangerous in fact and the the latinum in the chat says the banco bishop is dangerous what's the banco bishop it's the dark square bishop oh yeah that boy over nine thou wow oh yeah the bishop is a this piece is your best piece in the banco you will be down material sometimes meaning pawns but this bishop is, is a monster. So after g6, knight to c3, we develop, right? And bishop to g7 makes total sense. We've got the dark square diagonal here. We are going to get this a pawn whenever we want. That's why we're not going to take it. We're focusing on rapid development. They go gambit. What does that mean? What does a gambit mean, right? Usually, you gambit for rapid development, like you do in the queen's gambit, scotch gambit, any gambit. When you gambit something, you're, you're looking to get fast-paced play. Hence, we didn't take back on a6. We developed knight f6, g6, bishop g7. We're going to probably even castle next before even thinking about this pawn, right? Castles, then g3, which makes sense, right? g3 makes sense. And then we're going to look at what happens after the g3 move. d6. So d6 is a move that is played a lot. Bishop g2 and knight b to d7. There's also knight a6. I've seen, uh, and I've studied a lot of Banco theory myself. Knight a6 to c7 is another route. If you guys just want to be spicy here, you want to take the pawn. You can also go knight a6, knight b4 is another route. Trying to swing back around and playing bishop b7. But you have to be careful there because a3 is playable. But a3 can't be played with the bishop on c1. Or at least he can't take the bishop. Meaning knight takes, 
castles. Oh, it can't take the knight. A3 can't be actually captured right now due to the pin. So something like bishop e7 would be allowed. But e4, you have to be careful in some of these positions because the knight is going to be misplaced, hence being on c7 is usually the best. And you need e6 and f5 is pawn breaks. This knight goes to g4, the bishop opens up. You have to know the ideas, right, of the banco. The queen usually goes to a5 sometimes, b6 or c7. This rook goes to b8. Bishop a6 or on the diagonal. It's nasty on the type of counterplay you get in the banco. Save a lot. Thanks for the tier one. Appreciate you, big fellow. So let's go back to it. This is definitely spicy. The banco is a very, very active opening. Very active. So, right, this content isn't allowed to be free. Thanks for the gifted, bro. So after castles, right, let's go back to that. G3, D6, Bishop G2. Now, of course, your opponent may be playing different stuff, but just try to figure out what is black doing with the pieces. And then you can try to obviously uh, deviate and adapt to what's going on accordingly. Bishop G2, Knight goes to D7. We still focusing on development. What does it say? The main difference between this position and the main line of the Banco is Black's bishop is still on c8. The bishop on c8 prevents white's usual rook b1, b3, and bishop b2. In this line, white is unable to use this setup. Black could also play knight takes a6. Did I just mention that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. using this position and his bishop on c8. Okay, so castles from white. Also, there's a rook b1 option, and they mentioned a game that this was played in by Ivanchuk. So you, you can actually check that game out yourself. I'm actually not going to look at that. But castles, knight to b6. Okay, knight b6 here. Um, knight d7 was to go knight b6, putting pressure on d5. Knight to d2 from white. Very common move. You want to swing to c4 or b3. You also want to defend the pawn and play pawn at e4. All at the same time. Bishop a6, we finally collect one of the pawns back. We still done a pawn. We collect one. Queen c2, and then watch this move, bishop b7. And you're like, bro, why did I move this bishop two times? It went from a6, now back to b7. Very strange. Let's read it. Always read what it says. Black provokes e4, opening up the a6, f1, and eyeing d3. What this means here is after the e4 move, this bishop, you see this a lot in King's Indians, and uh, many, many openings, obviously, with the black pieces, but you'll provoke more pawns on the same color of this bishop so now this bishop is worse think about this right now the bishop is a little bit more active now it's not active not active or less active right active less active right you know behind the same games yeah i've ever got so so here interesting you know right and then you put the bishop back again like you see the little move there. it looks like you don't know what you're doing but in fact you actually do you actually do know what you're doing, guys. You know what you're doing. We're going to move this bishop a few times back and forth. Put this bishop back on a6. Now it's definitely on a great diagonal. And this bishop kind of looks silly. Rook to d1. And here, um, I always I used to call this the Magnus move. The reason why I called this is because the first time I knew what a Banco anything was, this was many years ago, when I saw Magnus put a knight on g4 like this. I mean, this knight g4 move is really strong. And I'm like, what's, what was this about? Well, you're going to move it for number one. The knight can move from e5 back over to c4. The bishop now opens up, right? The knight can go again into c4. Sometimes there's stuff on f2 like bishop d4. There's a lot of play here for the pawn that we're down. Look at white's development or the lack of development for white. And we have the bishops that are open. This is a good position. We have compensation for being down the pawn that we sacrificed in the opening. Knight f3. And then white black goes knight to c4, right? Using the squares, the bishops here, why not? It's pressure. Pressure. Pressure here. H3, making the knight move back. Well, don't go here. We go to e5. So now we can trade. We got a little bit of space, right? Queen a5, rook f to b8. Knight takes, knight takes. And pawn to b3. There was a rook b1 move. You can follow this line in your own time. Queen a5, you like that reroute action? Exactly. Thanks for the uh, follow over shot. Yeah, that's crazy. Give away a c-pawn open file. Absolutely, Mike. Absolutely. Queen a5, bishop b2. Finally develop some pieces here. C4, I like this break a lot. Probably even a rook move might have been fine as well. You can always check with Stockfish up here. Just turn, turn the engine on. Tells you rook at c8. Look at that. C4 is a move as well. But c4, though... C4 was the move here. Activity. We're going to put the rooks on the file. Knight went to E2. Didn't want none of that trouble, bro. 
Didn't want none of that trouble. Rook F to C8, very nice. You have to remember Banco, activity, 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 activity. If you ever feel like you're not being active, you're probably playing it wrong. Bruh. Probably playing it wrong. So you need to be active. Look at all of Black's pieces are active. Queen is out on A5. Bishop's off the back rank on A6. This rook's on the A file. This rook's on the C file. Pawn went from C5 to C4. Knight's on E5. The bishop is able to still influence the center. It's a very, very active opening for the pawn that we gave up. Bishop C3. C takes B3. Here come the tactics now, right? C takes B3 is crazy because, you know, obviously if bishop takes A5, the queen's hanging. You can also take with the pawn as well. But this is why your tactics need to be sharp. I highly recommend for the tactical players watching this video right now, you need to do your tactics every day. If you're not doing them, you need to be doing them, right? Because the Banco is not for the people that don't do tactics. So if you don't do your tactics, we're going to have maybe a Queen's Gambit decline for you later on. Okay? Okay? It's going to be okay. We're going to have something for you too. But for the people that do their tactics, right? This is definitely one of those openings where they're definitely going to show. Because after a move like this, Bishop C3... You're always looking for tactics, obviously, but definitely in a position like this. C takes B3, A takes, and then the line ends with Queen C5 saying, Black has achieved all of his goals, controlling all important squares and the files. But I'm down a pawn, though, right? But I'm down a pawn, though, you know? You just say, but I'm not a rapper, right? You know, that's crazy. This is ridiculous. That makes sense I, uh, how I throw so many of these. Tactics be lacking. Yeah, exactly. Save a lot. Exactly. You gotta you gotta get the tactics up. We gotta work on them. This is a nasty line. All the best moves for white too, right? I mean, these are probably humans playing, to be honest. I'm assuming he grabbed this from games and and because uh, this is like mainline stuff. All right, because not some of these aren't like if you look, you turn the engine on, you can go back a few moves, and you'll be like, yo, the engine says this, but they played this. It's because it's humans. Right. It's because it's humans. You always reference human data. And not really the computer data because we're not playing computers, right? So, okay, we'll look at this one briefly and then we're going to end the video um, so you guys can get on it. All right. Um, Spuzz Smasher, like fuzzy. It might be because I have my air conditioner on. That could be a thing. That might be it. Um, so, Spuzz Smasher says something about the mic being a little bit off. I think that might be from, um, from my air conditioner being on. A little bit hot. So, thanks for letting me know. Maybe I'll turn it off for the next video, for video two, but let's see. So, let's do d4, knight f6, um, c5, d5, b5, takes, a6, takes, g6. Same thing. Knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3. Okay? Sounds fine to me, says Cougar Bane. I mean, it's, it's whatever. Whatever. Castles g3, d6, all same moves, bishop g2, knight d7, castles, knight b6. Right. And this one, what did they play in the last one? 92. The last one was 92. All right. I am in Michigan, bro, but it's like, it's actually not that cold. You'd be, you'd be surprised. I'll see Queen of Tiff. Thank you. I noticed it though. It's not terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is the air though. It is the air because the air conditioner is on. It's like hot, bro. It was hot through here um, earlier. I had it on. Um, you could, y'all guys, you guys couldn't hear it earlier because I had the music on, so. But uh, yeah, we'll turn it off for the next one. So okay, knight b six though. The, what we looked at before was ninety two. Now we're looking at ninety one, which is more logical because they try to swing the knight around like this, like an English English. They do this in the English, or sometimes even this way, right? But they move in a lot of knight moves to say the least. Ninety one. The idea is to transfer the knight to e three, and protect the d five pawn. Right. That's exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna run run through this one. You. Take the pawn, knight c2, we're thinking activity, same moves, right? Knight c4, boom. Knight c4, knight goes to e3, queen b6, we're active. Literally active. You see the, the moves are almost the same, almost identical. b3, okay, maybe not identical, of course, but uh, you know the bishop was on a6, the queen was in a5, the last one. b6, this one. This is an obvious move we probably have to take, right? So takes, takes, we keep the activity, keep the ball rolling. You can't slow things down. If you notice, black's like doing something every move. Knight g4, hit the bishop. Bishop d2, c4. I'm doing something every move. Activity, chat. Activity. Activity. Activity is the word of the day for the bank up. If you can learn to be active, 
you can play this opening very very successfully and also other ones too that, that require require activity but definitely this one will help you a lot with uh being active h3 and then watch this move right here bishop takes c3 whoa now that's honestly a scary move because we never give this up we don't ever give up your your, your dark square bishop this is almost better than a rook in fact i'll give you a quick example if you go knight here knight e4 i'm probably not going to take this rook believe it or not this bishop is stronger than this rook because it actually controls a lot of squares around my king and i could be i could actually be in danger because i gave that bishop up just a a, a food for thought there guys just so you know just so you understand that but here that's why this is such a you know wow whoa why did he play this because his follow-up watch his follow-up bishop takes and hopefully you're doing your tactics big fella here it is b whoa 93 he was not expecting that one <laughs> what the heck is that boy oh my goodness 93 if pawn takes right pawn takes queen takes e3 that's check and obviously i just get the piece back so i stole the pawn there stole the pawn there. that was nasty and actually i mean well stole the pawn meaning got the pawn back because remember we were down a pawn but bishop takes c3 is nice and then knight e3 that's a nasty tactic bishop d4 knight takes d1 and this like teeters out to some um end game here that looks like this rook fb8 bishop e3 and rook takes b3 it says with equality right which which many times that's how your banco games will go you're gonna get the you're gonna get a lot of play and you can get way more than equality Sometimes you get way less too if you're not active. Make sure you're active, guys. Watch this many times about the activity of where the pieces go, guys. But this is part one of Banco Gambit. We're going to keep it short and sweet here, about 15, 16 minutes. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. We're going to have part two tomorrow. And uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates and stuff. So we'll see you guys on the next video.